that equality name, a statewide organization that's been working to secure full equality for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and yes, transgender mayors since 1984. I'm also I also serve as president of the board of directors of Maine Transgender Network, an organization that provides necessary support, resources, and education to the trans community across the entire state. As a transgender woman, I'm honored to speak briefly this morning at this first ever Transgender Lobby Day. And I want to be sure to thank the organizers, especially Maine Trans Lobby, for bringing this event to life, so thank you. This morning, I want to call attention to Maine's record in supporting and advancing equality. Our state motto, Dear Ago, which translated means, I lead, is fitting. Not only does America's day begin in Maine, but we have been leading the nation in ensuring that everyone who lives and visits this beautiful state feels welcome and safe in every aspect of their life. In 2005, Maine was one of the first states in the nation to extend anti-discrimination protections to include sexual orientation as a protected class, which as defined, which as defined by the Maine Human Rights Act to include gender identity and gender expression. This, this important law protects Mainers like us against discrimination in housing, employment, education, <coughs> public accommodations, and credit. Soon after the Maine Human Rights Act was passed, state agencies went to work and updated policies and regulations and procedures, not only to reflect the new law, but also provide necessary guidance. Unfortunately, rules and guidelines related to education never came to light leading school districts to interpret the law on their own. Some did so with satisfactory results, others did nothing, and so we're left with a patchwork of policies and procedures that vary drastically from one school to the next, leaving educators and administrators in the dark on how to follow a law passed 11 years ago. In 2014, the Maine Supreme Court affirmed the rights of a transgender student, Nicole Maines, affording her all the rights of other girls at her school. This past year, both the Human Rights Commission and the Department of Education finally created guidelines for schools to follow, which would have given educators and administrators the tools needed to better support LGBT students, especially our transgender students. Unfortunately, those guidelines, which were ready for public comment this winter, needed the governor's signature to move forward and he declined to act. And in doing so, left schools, educators, administrators, parents and students out in the cold. In the aftermath of the governor's decision, the Maine Human Rights Commission published a memo that includes interpretations of this law in relation to supporting transgender students. While this is a giant step forward and the interpretations are thorough and adhere to best practices, it is not enough. Maine educators, parents, students, and more importantly, our whole trans community deserve better from our governor, not the cold shoulder we deserved. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Zach Hawkins. I'm a 17-year-old trans male, and I attend a private school called The New School in Kennebunk, Maine. I'm here today to speak to you all about the need to keep laws in place that allow transgender people to legally use bathrooms corresponding with their gender and to be referred to as their correct name by school officials. Now, imagine it's late at night, you're all alone walking down a dark alleyway. There's that feeling in the pit of your stomach, you're terrified of what could happen at any moment. That's what I feel every time I walk into a public bathroom. Now I'd like you to imagine you're on a road trip, you just finished that last sip of that giant water bottle, and that long highway doesn't have a bathroom in sight for miles. You're left feeling uncomfortable, praying that you'll magically come upon a gas station as you sit crossing your legs and squirming with your full bladder. Now imagine those scenarios being all day, every 
every day. Imagine having to walk into school and not being able to go to the bathroom until you get home. Going to get groceries, clothes, medicine, and not being able to use a public bathroom even once the entire time you are out. I am filled with fear every single time I walk into a bathroom. That I could be attacked, that I could be removed, or that I could even be killed just because I have to urinate. Just because I'm being who I am. I'm one of the few transgender teens in Maine who's lucky enough to attend an LGBT friendly school. The new school contains only ungendered bathrooms and refers to me as Zach. Many students aren't as fortunate as I am and are denied fundamental rights like having access to a bathroom and being referred to by their name. I'm here today to tell you why all transgender people deserve to have the right to be acknowledged as who they are and should have access to the bathrooms that either correspond with their gender or at least have access to an ungendered bathroom. My school has saved me and that needs to be true for others as well. Schools shouldn't be one of the contributors to high suicide rates among transgender youth. I entered the new school as a depressed, suicidal, and anxiety-ridden teenager who remained stuck in a closet I hated due to the fear of how I would be treated. The fear that even if I went through the trouble of coming out, that I would still be referred to by my birth name, that I would still be lumped in as a girl. But I've been lucky enough to go to a school like the new school. A school where I'm referred to as Zach, where I am a boy. And there's never been a question about it. A safe place where I'm not only seen as a boy, but where when we go away on school trips, I'm not forced to stay in a room for girls. Or that when we go on field trips or we go to retreats, I'm not forced to have to conform to a gender that is mine in order to meet society's standards. I'm standing here today as a proud transgender student. I'm standing here today as a person who enjoys speaking to people. I'm standing here today as a student who used to think about killing myself on a daily basis. I'm standing here today as a student who was not self-harmed in seven months. while at school. And I'm 100% accepted by the people I have to spend my days with. I'm standing here today as one of the few who has access to what every person should have access to, respect and safety. We students have the right to live in a world where we don't fear going to school every day. We deserve to feel accepted and loved. We deserve to be called by our names and our preferred, no, not our preferred, our correct pronouns. We deserve to not have to spend seven hours holding our urine because we are told not to use the bathroom that is for our genders. Since coming out of the new school and having been accepted and understood by my community, I have become confident and I have become finally happy. For the first time in my life, I look forward to going to school every day because it has finally become the safe place that schools are supposed to be. It's time we all realize the only way that we'll ever cure the fear and hatred some cis people hold for transgender people is to educate others. Find commonality between all of us. We need to do this until people no longer question the rights of trans people having access to bathrooms they wish to use. Until cis people get over their problems with us. So that rather than us having to hold our urine, having to fear it, the violence that we can endure at any moment, having to be dead named, which in itself is an act of violence. It's time that we make the ones creating these problems deal with their societal-based discomfort until they get over their intolerance. It is 2016. It's time that we let people pee in peace. <laughs> We stop the hatred. We stop insisting on calling a child a name that makes them feel like they're being stabbed in the heart every time they hear it, every time they have to read it. It's time that we grow up and we deal with the difference in the world. It's 2016. It's time we create safer environments that will be shaping the minds of our future the way they should be. And a 
place where they feel they are respected and belong. Recently, anti-transgender laws have been popping up in states and towns all over our great country. And now our governor wants to repeal laws we already have in place in order to do the same in our great state. Our state, whose motto is Derigo, meaning I lead. So rather than following others in the way of intolerance, perhaps it's time we lead, as we have done in many other cases of civil rights, in a positive way. Lead in a way that's filled with love and acceptance. In our great state, let's say no to hatred, to intolerance, to fear, and continue allowing people to go to the bathroom that corresponds with their gender and to be called by their names. transgender student, YouTuber, as well as an activist. Since I was 11, I've known I was transgender, but it wasn't until I was in seventh grade when I came out. I have been known as a male ever since. When I told my teacher, when I told my teacher, Miss Wanzer, that I was transgender, she wasn't surprised. In fact, none of my friends and family were. She told me she supported me, which was an extremely awesome feeling. In my eighth grade year, my mom Katie and I talked to my principal and my superintendent about changing my name on my student ID for, sco for school to my preferred name. They said they couldn't do it. So when I got my ID, I threw it away. It was extremely embarrassing for me. In school and in public, I am extremely afraid to use the men's restroom for fear of getting beat up. There needs to be more transgender friendly bathrooms in this state and Governor of the Page is extremely close-minded on this subject. We need to band together and tell him we mean business and we are tired of getting discriminated against.
we have arrived. For too long, our community has been disenfranchised. For too long, our community has been told to be content with letting others represent us on our behalf. For too long, our community's issues have been ignored or considered secondary. Our right to survive has been made a less important issue in the overall fight for LGBTQ justice. That ends today. right that transgender youth and children learn that their governor is their first bully. It is not right that transgender children learn that they do not belong in the halls of power and influence. That ends today. We are taking the state house. We are going to be speaking to our legislators, our representatives, our senators, and we are going to be telling them that we are their constituents, that trans people are mainers too, and that we deserve the same level of respect and the same level of representation as all of their other constituents, because they work for us. To our allies who joined us here today, thank you for listening to our press conference, but your work is far from over. We need you now. We need you to put pressure on the LePage administration. We need you to watch out for bills and for issues that will affect our community negatively. We need you to be our allies. And today, that's what we're going to be asking you for. We hope to see you in the halls. Thank you.